You're listening to episode 175 of the Child Life on Call podcast, finding out your child has cancer during your pediatric residency with Dr. Maureen Michelle. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Child Life on Call. This podcast is a safe place for parents to share their stories about what it's like to have a child that has a medical experience, diagnosis, disease, and or everything in between. We know there's power in sharing stories and that power multiplies when you can listen to other parents who have walked a similar path to yours. Giving and getting advice is great, but hearing how another parent navigates the complexities and nuances of healthcare is even better. As a child life specialist, my role is to support, validate, and provide emotionally safe spaces for kids and their families, and I am so honored to be on this journey with you. In addition to parent stories, we sprinkle in some expert episodes every now and again that have content for both parents and professionals in the field of healthcare, all with the mission to empower parents to be confident advocates and partners with the care team during healthcare experiences. We're so glad you're here. It says a lot about a person when you interview them from the breast pumping private room of an airport on their way to go visit a college with their child. And I don't think anything can more accurately describe Dr. Michelle's commitment to both herself, her career, her patients, and her families, and her mission to describe that life isn't over when you get a life-altering diagnosis. Dr. Maureen Michelle is an amazing pediatric immunologist and allergist, and is also a parent just like you and me. She has navigated the complexities of finding out that your child has cancer while at a really important part of discovering and entering her career and her pediatric residency. But that's not really what her message is about today. Her message is about finding those moments and not letting them break you, but letting them enhance and define you. I just loved my conversation with you, Maureen, and I cannot wait to share it with all of our listeners today. I sometimes I get into these introductions and I don't even tell you who I am. Hi, <laughs> I am Katie. I am a certified child life specialist, the host and CEO of Child Life on Call. We want to get digital resources and tools into the hands of parents and care team and child life specialists to expand child life services. So that is exactly what we're doing here. And Dr. Maureen Michelle, we are so grateful you're here to now be a part of our amazing resource library for parents. Before we jump into the episode, I wanted to let you guys know that if you are a parent, a child life specialist, or professional working with children, you're going to want the hospital or physician's office or urgent care that you take your kids to to have the Child Life On Call app. It is an evidence-based tool designed to empower children and families during medical experiences. And 100% of the child life specialists who have used this app believe that it can help with expanding child life's reach beyond the bedside. And 100% of child life specialists believe it helps parents feel more empowered in their child's care. Learn how to get the Child Life On Call app for your facility or doctor's office by going to childlifeoncall.com slash partners. Awesome. Well, why don't you just begin by introducing our listeners to who you are? Tell us your name. If you want to set the picture of where you are right now, I think that would be really fun because I'm sure a lot of moms can relate to this (laughs) juggling act in those rooms and the color needs to be better, I think. Yeah. (laughs) It needs to be better. Definitely. Um, So I'm Maureen. Um, I uh, am sitting in a breastfeeding room right now uh, at an airport uh, trying to juggle life. And uh, one of my children needed to be in the state of Oregon. So we're flying from DC to Oregon today and uh, wanted to make sure that this recording happened. So found myself a nice, quiet room. (laughs) And it's perfect. Um, and so I'm I'm here today and appreciate you having me on your show just just to share with your audience a little bit about um, kind of who I am and uh, 
allow them to hear that Mm, life is going to be okay. Well, why don't you kind of walk us through the beginning stages and you have a really, you, you kind of form these two parts of people. We usually uh, interview on the podcast. We usually have parents come and speak who are experts in their own right of their experience and their child. And then sometimes we have experts come on in the medical field and working with children and you really marry both of those together. So tell us a little bit about you and that experience. Yes. So I, throughout my entire life, wanted to not just be a physician, but be a pediatrician. And in fact, when I was little, would um, play the game of life and cross my fingers that I would get the occupation card of being a doctor. Um, The other thing that I did during that game playing was collect all the little peg children to fill my car um, because I also really wanted to be a mom. And I was able to, um, through the army, join um, the military's medical school and become a physician. I was also uh, very blessed to become a mom. Um, When I was in pediatric residency, my uh, second child, who's my daughter, was six months old. And uh, when she was young, was having uh, symptoms of diarrhea more so than the typical breastfed infant, and saw a bunch of physicians, um, thought it wasn't anything to worry about. Uh, We found out that it was indeed something to worry about. And she was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, a type of pediatric cancer of a person's adrenal gland. Um, So when I got that news, my like world caved in. Um, I uh, went through everything with my daughter, surgery, chemo, the whole works, um, and she did well. Uh, I kind of bounced back from that um, and returned back to work after she got a clean bill of health. Um, Fast forward to who, when she was 12 years old, um, she was having a uh, frequent urination and had texted me from her school saying, mom, you've got to do something that I have peed 12 times today. So I, of course, thought, well, this can't be anything bad. It must be a urinary tract infection. Like she's already had the cancer card. So um, this is nothing. Went to her school um, after uh, snagging some uh, tools from the pediatric clinic and had her pee in a cup uh, in a school bathroom. She called me into the bathroom when she was done, and I used a urine dipstick that I had gotten from the clinic to dip her urine, and in this tiny bathroom became the physician to diagnose her with type 1 diabetes. Um, So again, my world like crumbled, uh, knowing what that meant for her, Um, and uh, I started leading this life uh, that was filled with being worried and overwhelmed and um, scared for my kids and especially my daughter. I uh, found coaching and through the tools of coaching um, really have changed my life um, and have realized that uh, I can lead a very fulfilling life uh, it, despite the health concerns and challenges that my daughter has faced. And through all of the work that I've done on myself, um, realized that I'm actually 
a better physician because of it too, because I'm able to share those things with my patients. And um, the so now it has become kind of my passion to make sure that other parents are aware that, you know what, there, there is hope that life is going to be okay, that you can be a great parent to your kid despite their health challenges. And that great parenting means also taking care of yourself in the process. You have just been dealt so many hands that could have made anybody just kind of crumble and give up. So um, seeing you here and as you talk, you have this like smile, you know, that I can only see. And this like energy, I we're on zoom so I can actually see what you look like. It's really inspiring to just kind of see this life pour out of you, um, through everything that you've been through. And I know there's no shortage of challenges that you faced this transformation that you speak of. Was there a moment that you were like, I've got to change, like I've got to get help. Or was it just kind of maybe a long period of overwhelm as you described it? Um, definitely a long period of being overwhelmed and, um, but there's really, I I will tell two very quick stories. And the, the first one that comes to mind is something that I realized I needed help, but ignored it. Um, and that was, when I returned to work after my daughter had gotten the clean bill of health after her cancer diagnosis. I went back to work and um, was seeing kids in the clinic who had a rash or had an ear infection or had a cold. And um, I would leave work at the end of the day, like angry, angry because I would feel like oh my gosh, like this is nothing. Like do do these parents not realize what I just went through with my kid? And um, so after some period of time of, of doing that, I have enough insight to know that's not healthy and I'm going to absolutely burn out in this great career that I have always wanted if I don't fix it. And it was really, you know, I was able and that, that this all happened prior to even knowing about coaching, but was able to kind of shift my mindset to realize that these parents were bringing their kids in to see me because they were worried, just like I was worried about my daughter and I had the tools um, and knowledge to be able to get rid of their worry. So isn't that a gift that I should be appreciating, not being, you know, resentful of them trying to Mm -hmm. seek help for their kids? The yeah and you know the the second story was really when i knew that i had to find something um and i i had lived these years of just being overwhelmed and worried and was kind of on this personal growth journey and went to a conference um where the uh person leading the conference had everyone close their eyes and start dreaming. And we, she took us through this kind of guided meditation about dreaming and goals. And, and I close my eyes. And during the time she's talking, like, there's nothing like it's just dark. And um, then we had to open our eyes and we had 10 minutes that we had to write everything that came to our mind. And I just sat there with this blank sheet of paper. And at the end of the 10 minutes, like looked at this blank sheet of paper, like I have nothing. And it it was that kind of realization that I was leading this life of 
this constant worry and fear for my daughter that I had I had lost my own life in in this process and so really needed to to figure out how I was going mm-hmm. to to change that. It makes that. so much sense and that you would feel that way about both scenarios. You know, I think the fear of losing or your the most important things in your life, your children being ill and sick and unable to help them in a way that you feel you should is devastating. Um, and so it makes a lot of sense that you would have some resentment. You know, I hear that a lot. You know, you weren't just parenting, you were like complex parenting. You were you were just extreme parenting. You know, you were on another level um, to get right. you to burn out with parenting and then your career as well. So that's probably not easy to admit, right? That doctors are humans who have real feelings when they get in the car at the end of the day. Yeah, that, that, what you just said, like doctors are yeah. humans is such an important, like foot stomping point um, that, you know, we make mistakes and we have feelings and, um, and just like every other human. And the reason I say it's so important is one of the things that I work with people and parents about is really learning about how to advocate for their child. And what often holds them back is this thought that physicians are the superhumans that uh, know everything and how in the world can I ask questions like they're going to think poorly of me if I ask them something or if I don't agree with their plan. And so keeping in mind that I'm here telling you stories about being human because Physicians are absolutely human. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Thank you for saying that. Um, Lindsay, who I'm going to call you out, I know you're editing this podcast, so you'll hear this. She, I've heard the term trust but verify a lot of times when I'm in the hospital setting myself. And she had a situation with one of her kids and she said, you know, I, I believed and trust that my doctor is doing the right thing. I'm just going to double check because- I'm another set of eyes. I have a different perspective and probably a lot of times everything is just fine, but sometimes it's not. And she catches things and that's because doctors are human. And so she comes at it with a spirit of collaboration. Like I trust my doctor, but I myself am going to take the step to verify what I've said, what they've said, and that we're on the same page, which is such a beautiful collaboration to think about. And we hear it time and time again on this podcast, when parents find their voice, it's empowering. And then that actually helps the care team, the physicians, the providers, because they're now working with you rather than trying to get you to do something. Yeah. And I think, you know, thinking about it as a collaboration is so important. And, um, you know, through my challenges of parenting, like it has for sure, shaped how I treat patients. And a patient does not leave my office unless they're able to kind of say back to me what we've talked about so that I I can make sure we're all on the same page. And I have, you know, this this opportunity for them to ask questions and and i offer them you know if you don't um if you don't find what i'm saying okay that's all right you're not going to offend me because medicine is never black and white there is a lot of gray in there and it is so important for parents to agree with a treatment plan because I don't want a parent leaving my office with me thinking they're going to follow through with it and get home and be like, I'm not comfortable with this medicine. Like I'm not going to do this. Like that just does nobody any good. Um, So really 
approaching it in this spirit of collaboration is a way for parents to be courageous about it and realize that they don't need to shrink into the corner and just agree with everything. It's okay to disagree and it's okay to ask questions because it it ultimately serves everybody mm, well. I love that. So parents, are you hearing that? That physicians are desperate <laughs> for for your input and your questions because they want you leaving feeling informed, you know, and I can tell you many times working in a hospital, the, somebody will come in and say something, they'll leave, they'll look at us and go, wait, what just happened? <laughs> you know? And that is, that is normal because you're so overwhelmed. You have so much on your mind, so much information that's new get, you have to process. So it's okay to ask your doctor to slow down, say something again, write it down, point you in the direction of a resource, message them on the portal that night to confirm, you know, all of these are small things that you can do to really make sure you're understanding what's happening. Absolutely. And, you know, we all are learn things differently. And some of us learn by listening, some of us learn by seeing things on paper. Um, and so what you just gave as advice, I think is so important on, you know, if you don't get it the first time, have them say it again in a different way or have them draw it like the, and that is okay. Yeah. yeah it's wonderful. So I want to take back a little bit, and then I want you to share about your wonderful book that you've written that I'm holding here, right here, Recla reclaiming life. Um, can you take us back to those early days when your daughter was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, you yourself are a physician. Did you ever have some of the same feelings that other parents have too? Like I shouldn't question them or I'm scared or I'm not an expert in cancer. So, you know, just talk to us about some of the human aspects that you, you felt too. Yeah. So, um, the, some people have asked me a, a similar question and said, oh, it must've been easier for you because you're a doctor. So you were probably less overwhelmed because you're a doctor and you understood what they were talking about. And m m I always say it's actually, I think, a little more challenging because I was a doctor, because I had taken care of patients who had neuroblastoma and I knew what it meant. And sometimes being naive about things is actually helpful because it allows you to move through a journey, not really worrying about a hundred steps ahead of you that you're just worried about the one step ahead of you. And I, so it compounded, I think the degree of overwhelm, but the, the other thing that I would say is, you know, when my daughter was diagnosed with diabetes, um, the, we were sitting in the emergency room and again, like diabetes, I had taken care of lots of kids and made that diagnosis way too many times. And um, the the we're in the emergency room, the ER doc had seen her and um, he says to me, well, we need to get a chest x-ray. And I was like, huh? Chest x-ray? Like, I didn't say anything about a cough. I didn't say anything about a fever. Like she is just has lots of times that she's using the bathroom and she's got sugar yeah. in her urine. And um, th there's nothing about any sort of respiratory thing. And so I said, well, uh, I'm confused. Like why a chest x-ray? And he's like, well, we need to make sure it's not pneumonia. And um, so again, like, you know, I, in looking back on that experience, should have stood up for my daughter and should have stood up for what I knew um, didn't need to be done. But I, because he was an ER physician in the same hospital I worked at, 
just stepped back and said, okay, and let it happen. And um, I, after that, had spent some time like beating myself up about it because I could have advocated better in the moment. And it was, again, this like, um, this uh, weird, um, weird, but not uncommon feeling that I didn't want to have this conflict with somebody that I had I, I sort yeah. of knew like well, we and were just kind taking of care of your child. You're like, you're like, I want you to treat my right. child good and do what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was also like, it's hard because I, in that moment, like just wanted to yeah. be a mom, not a doctor. And uh, it's hard to separate yeah. those two sometimes. Yeah. And so this, uh, I, I tell that story because it's the realization again that like doctors are humans too, right? And that every parent is going to run into this scenario where they might have to face conflict when it has to do with an issue on their child. And it's okay not to like it. Um, but thinking about my scenario and, and realizing I could have done it better, um, allows people to learn from my mistake and be able to, you know, not let it happen to them, like continuing to ask questions and say like, look, I really don't think an x-ray is needed. Do you, but I understand what you're saying. You're worried about pneumonia. Can we get another uh, one of your ER docs in here and, and let's be the tiebreaker of this discussion? So you can do it in a non-confrontational way, but doing it is the important yeah, part. It takes practice too. It takes practice, these little things, and it's easier, way easier to look back. And I would also say like you at that time, Maureen were the mom in that scenario. You know, you weren't right. the doctor yep. who was like, is there new research about <laughs> pneumonia and diabetes that I don't know? <laughs> like, um, you know, so was it, was it a mistake looking back maybe, but at that time, like you, you chose the best with what you had in your brain and in your heart at that moment, you know, and um, right. I would also argue how difficult it must have been for you too, because doctors would look at you and say, you know what I'm talking about. And sure, like on your best day as a doctor, you know, but on your worst day, when you're tired and worried and fear, and you've got other kids, and you have to be this place you've given, you haven't peed and you have to eat. Like on those days, you actually, we don't have the best parts of our brain available. So I feel yep. for you a lot and having to go through that. Yeah. The, the same ER doc after the x-ray was done, came back into the room and, and he's like, okay, so it's not pneumonia and um, we're going to start some insulin, but you watch over what I'm doing because you're probably better at this than I am. And again, not something you want mm. to hear when you're in this like mom worried yeah. state about your child, right? So uh, yes, absolutely. What you are saying, oh. yes, a hundred percent, yes. Well, you wrote <laughs> this beautiful book, um, reclaiming life, as kind of going through your own journeys and experiences, and from you know what we started talking about at the beginning, really wanting parents with kids who have chronic illness to to get part of their life back. So where can they find this book? How can they get more of you? If you offer coaching, where can people get in touch and, and read your book? Yeah. So the, the book is called Reclaiming Life. It's on Amazon and it started as a project to just recount stories that my kids often ask me. And so I had decided I was just going to put these stories down for them and their kids' kids and their kids' kids and uh, realized in the process that I can really help other parents who have a similar story or a similar journey as I did. And the book um, 
kind of morphed and became stories about my daughter, but also stories about patients I've taken care of, along with lessons on how parents can take those first steps to really reclaiming their life. Uh, and so folks can find it on Amazon. It's also at Barn. The novel, um, and uh, they can also find me on my website at MaureenMichelleMD.com, and that's Michelle with one L. Um, and I'm also on Instagram and Facebook well, too. Thank you so much for spending your time in the Reagan International Airport in a breastfeeding room. <laughs> to speak to more parents and I'm so grateful for your time for you and tell your daughter thank you for letting us share some of what she has gone through and what you've gone through as her mom um, and it just means so much to us so thank you so much no thank you and I have to you know give props to the breastfeeding room <laughs> like worked out great and I do appreciate you for having me on your show this has been very fun thank you Thank you all so much for listening to Child Life on Call. If you head to our website, childlifeoncall.com, you're going to find all sorts of stuff there for parents, professionals, healthcare providers, child life specialists, no matter who you are. Actually, when you just go to our homepage, it'll tell you, it'll help you direct to exactly where you need to go. On that, you'll find opportunities and PDUs for child life specialists, parents. We've got a starter kit for you. And clinicians, we even have a clinician course, which teaches you how to be a confident and capable caregiver in pediatrics. We're so grateful that you're here. Please DM us on Instagram. And like I mentioned, when you rate and review this podcast, it helps other families be able to find us. So let's keep doing that. And I will see you again here next week.